Okay, so we'll kick off the new app by creating a brand new vanilla Rails app. I'm using Rails 7.1 at the time of this recording, so that's probably the latest and greatest. Uh, we could say Rails version 7.1.2. Uh, maybe there's another one out by now. I'm not sure. but And then Ruby 3.1.4. Uh, I think it's up to 2.2 now, but I think that's fine for our purposes. So whatever you're using, make sure it's pretty modern is the main main uh, takeaway there. So in this directory, I, I pretty much just kind of house some tutorial content in there. And I'll run Rails new and then sub, sub stacker. Uh, I'm going to call this one demo because I already have one called sub stacker for GitHub that I'll share with you all in the blog post and also the, the video description below if you wanna check that out. Okay, this is gonna go ahead and create everything that's vanilla with Rails to date. Um, the opinionated way of Rails lately is to not have any kind of bundling for CSS and all of that. Yeah, once Rails installed, I will add my uh, side project that's called Rails UI that kind of does all that stuff for us. Um, you're welcome to just use the vanilla approach. It won't have the bells and whistles as you see in the UI here. Uh, that's one thing that's different in the demo app. So take it with a grain of salt. There are a few additives in Rails UI that just simplify the process here. And it's kind of just solving a pain point I've had when I've done tutorials over the years. So, all right, well, CD into sub stacker demo. There we go. And um, I'm going to add the gem now. That's Rails UI. So I'm going to do it programmatically. So bundle add Rails UI. We'll go and fetch the repo, which is on GitHub. And again, check out the blog post. This will have everything there as far as what to type. But you can also follow along here if you want. So it's bundle add Rails UI slash slash GitHub to pass the repo. And it's get Rails UI is the... I guess account and then rails definitely not rails rails ui for the repo and then we'll pass the branch main just to make it explicit should go fetch that add it to our gem file from the branch and if verify if you want to check the gem file go to gem file here very bottom you should see rails ui there with the new declaration um Right now, I don't have this on Ruby Gems or anything, so you couldn't just go fetch it and it would find it. It's just on GitHub. Uh, eventually, actually, it'll be probably a private repo that is for sale uh, in some way or fashion and or I'm not sure how yet it'll work. I got to figure out all the details, but it's kind of like a theming engine. So there might be a per theme for sale gem, something like that. I'm not sure. Anyway, more on that to come in future video, probably. Uh, so with that installed, we can actually run the installer that I have. So Rails UI, or Rails, Rails UI install. And this is the part that will go and clean up the defaults from the Rails new and rebundle it to use um, the Rails bundling CSS and JS. So a lot in that one little statement, but there's a lot going on there that I just kind of solve with a little command here. This also installs Devise, which is something I, with every new app I've done demos on, it's just a pain to always do the views and stuff that are, you know, the login, sign up, all that stuff. They're just a pain to always do. So this does that for you and it kind of establishes a theme based on your selection, which Rails UI is configured. So with that done, we can go to our file and essentially just run the server. So I'm going to say bin dev with the new additions from rails UI. You can run bin dev. If you're using vanilla rails, you're probably just going to run rails server at that point. Then we'll visit local host and you'll see hopefully the front start page, which I've modified. Here's some quick links to everything with rails UI. Uh, this will expand as time goes, goes on, but you can read the docs, which are on rails UI.com or configure your app right away. I uh, default to naming it. Rails UI, we'll do it substacker and support at substacker.com. This is mostly presentational. It's nothing that's going to like break your app um, if you don't include it, but you will need to manually intervene if you want to update like mailers and stuff. So it's just something I like to take care of for you if you want support at substacker. Okay. And then uh, Tailwind CSS is going to be my preference. Um, word to the wise, I'm probably going to 
gravitates to Tailwind only for Rails UI. So you heard it here first. If that's the case, um, that's just kind of what feedback I've been hearing. All right, we'll save this down. It'll go ahead and actually fetch Tailwind, install it, do the configuration and everything under the hood. And you saw I picked a, a specific theme, which is just the default right now. I'm gonna have more themes as time comes, but it is one of those things that just takes me so long to do because I'm a perfectionist and I want it to be good and look good. So here's our theme. It's called Hound. Uh, it's the first theme for Rails UI. You can optionally install these other pages I've designed for you as part of a template or a, a theme itself, or just use the design system that's built in, which we have here. So you get all that stuff baked in. Uh, it's just kind of ready to rock and roll. So that's kind of like, if you've used Bootstrap, it's kind of like that, but it's also Tailwind. So if you use Tailwind, you'll know what I mean, that you need to kind of still use utility classes, but things are just kind of solved for. So like certain components are taken care of, like input groups, we've got a, like a, a componentized group and label and input just to save you some keystrokes. All right, with that out of the way, we can actually kind of get to the meat and potatoes of the app. So since this is a sharing stack i wanted to keep it kind of simple as far as like what structure will be so maybe in our readme i will do a little note taking so we'll say substacker and this is going to just kind of go along the lines of uh, what we are doing from the architectural standpoint so we will have a user model and we already have that baked in thanks to device which was installed during the installer for rails ui if you don't have that, you might want to go install it at this point and configure it. So we'll say the model responsible for a given entity who might add and share supplement stacks. When I, when I create a new app, this is kind of where I start. I, I have a markdown file. I think about what, how, how things are going to relate or what, what's the bare bones thing I need to get going and make sense from the get go. Uh, you don't want to kind of work yourself into a corner. So this is how I approach it. Otherwise you find yourself redoing things over and over again. Um, so if you can kind of either visualize it or make an outline it helps at least for me. So a stacks like a, a collection of products. a user can share something like that. Think of it as a container. Then we'll have the product. I kept this generic. You could call it a supplement, but I thought this, this app, you can probably like clone for other stuff. Like, I don't know, like pet products, like a whole pet stacker kind of thing for whatever you give your pet. This gets uh, shared inside a stack. has richer data like price, uh, description, title, etc. Cool. And then we have our brand, which is kind of like another, it's more or less a filter kind of. Um, I didn't make heavy use of it in this MVP, but you could totally do so if you added like something like search to filter down products. So uh, brand of the supplement. And there would only be one, one brand per supplement. One thing to note that's important is I want a product to belong to many stacks. So it can be rinse and reuse. And we only want to have one product in the database. So people who add a new product each time wouldn't need to actually add it, if that makes sense. So it's a resharable resource. So we'll get into that with the relationships coming up because it's a little more complex than just like a belongs to or a has many kind of scenario. Uh, usually through a join table is how that's done. All right, so that's, that's it essentially. So we have a user, a stack, a product, and a brand. And of course you can go way beyond the lengths of this to do more filtering and, and sorting and stuff in your app if you incorporate search like um, ratings or uh, manufacturer or origins, I don't know, all that stuff, uh, nutrition facts, kind of those things. 
I left that out. That's plenty to expand upon if you wanted to down the line. I think we'll stop the video there. The next video I'll do the relationship um, and generating of resources. So I'll look forward to that and see you in it.